Welcome back to the Pi Game game development series. We are working on a shmup. This is part six. And in this video, we're going to talk about animated sprites. How do you make a sprite that has a changing image, an image that changes over time? So, where we are right now is we have our ship and we have our meteors flying through space at us, and we can shoot them. But the meteors look a little boring because they're all facing the same way, and they would probably look a little better if they rotated. We could have them looking like tumbling asteroids. So that means we want to have those sprites be animated. So how do we go about that? Well, let's look at our mob sprite here. So we're using this image. And as you saw up in the player, we used a Pygame transform command to change the scale of the player sprite. Well, there's also a rotate transformation you can do on sprites as well. So we could take that meteor image and apply a rotation to it, and then it would turn. Uh, and if we did that over and over again, we could make it rotate all the way around in a circle. Um, the problem is that we don't want to rotate it every frame of the animation because we're running at 60 frames per second, the, the sprite would rotate really, really fast. So whenever you're doing any animation in a sprite, you also need to figure out a timing for how quickly you want that image to change. So we're going to need to set up a few things to make that happen. So first of all, just to make the sprite rotate, we're going to create a variable called uh, I'm just going to call it rot, short for rotation. Um, and that's going to be how far in degrees the sprite should be rotated. Okay, So it starts out not rotated, and then it's going to start going. Uh, and then we're also going to set up a rotation speed. Okay, And that's going to just be a random, um, a random number that will control how fast our sprite is rotating. Basically, how many degrees it's going to rotate every time we do it. Uh, that way we can have them tumbling in different directions. Okay, so we'll make that between minus 8 and 8. Um, and then to do the timing, remember we have a clock object, right, We that we created back when we uh, initialized the game. This clock thing is keeping track of how quickly the game is going and making sure it runs at 60 frames per second. Well, it also means it's counting time. So we can use that to count how long it's been since the last time we updated the image. And if we do that, we set a, a particular value there, we can say, is it time to rotate the image again? If it is, we'll do it. If it isn't, we'll wait. OK, so we're going to call that um, the last, last update. So this will be the time that we last updated. OK, the command for that is get ticks. A tick is a tick of the clock. So this will get however many ticks it's been since the game started, since the clock was started. And this will, every time we update, every time we, we rotate the image, we'll update this variable to keep track of when that happened. Now we're ready to update. Now we're going to need a, a few lines of code to make the rotation happen. And we need to do it in our update so that it uh, will check every frame of the animation if it's time to update yet. Um, but I don't want my update function to get too crowded and too full of code. So I'm going to just say that every time we update, we need to rotate or check to see if it's time to rotate. And that way we can define rotate separately. And that's useful because it keeps everything organized and the rotation code is all separated in this rotate function. Also, if you ever want to turn rotation off, you can just comment this right here, and then it won't ever do the rotate. So there we have that. Now we're ready to figure out how to do the rotation. But first we need to find out, is it time to rotate yet? So we need to figure out what time it is now. And so we'll do the get ticks command again. And now if whatever time it is now, minus whatever time it was the last time we updated. Right? And doing that will mean 
if now is uh, equal to a thousand and last update was equal to 900 then a thousand minus 900 it's been a hundred milliseconds since the last time we updated so this little subtraction here tells you how long it's been in milliseconds so we're going to say if that's greater than 50 then it's time to rotate again so we can take our last update variable and set it equal to now because we're rotating now and now is when we need to talk about something important about how this rotate uh, transform is going to work so I'm going to show you first the wrong way to do it so don't copy me on this I want you to see why uh, we're going to need to do it in a certain way so you might think you could just say well I just want to take the image and rotate it so I'll do transform dot rotate on my image and put whatever the rot, rot speed is. So like if what rotation speed was one, then I'm just going to rotate the, the image one degree. Um, and you might think that would work, but this is what will happen. All right, so you see how my meteors get completely scrambled around. Everything starts lagging. It's a huge problem. In fact, it's lagged so much it's hard to close the program. Eventually it will close. There we go. So why did that happen? Well, the thing about this rotate command is when it takes an image and rotates it, that process loses a tiny, tiny amount of information from the image, of the pixel information from that image. And that's fine if you just rotate it once. But every time you do it, you're losing a tiny bit. So doing it over and over again, eventually you're losing so much information that the image becomes uh, scrambled beyond recognition. So we don't want to do it that way. What we really want to do is rotate the original image, the nice clean image, and take that and rotate it however far we want it rotated. So the way we do that is we're going to go up here and we're going to call the meteor image we're going to make this the original image, okay? And we're going to set our sprites image equal to a copy of that. So we're going to take the original image and make a copy, okay? So the image will be a copy of that original, but now we have this nice original that we're not going to make any changes to. So then back down here in our rotate, what we can do is say, rotate the original image, but we don't want to rotate it at the ro rotation speed anymore. We want to figure out how much we're supposed to rotate it all together. So if we're keeping track of how far we're rotating, so we rotated 90 degrees, then next we're going to need to rotate it to 92, and then 94, and then 96, etc. So we want to take our whatever our rotation is and add the uh, rot speed and that'll give us our new rotation. But what happens when our rotation gets to be bigger than 360, right? If we're at 360 degrees and we rotate a degree, we'd be at 361. We don't want this rotation to just keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Uh, we want it to just loop back around to, to one again. And we can do that by just taking this and using the remainder operator which just says divide by 360, divide whatever you got by 360, so if we're at 361, and give me what's left over. So 360 divided by, or 361 divided by 360 is one with one left over. So it gives me that one left over. So now my rotation is equal to one. So that's a great way to keep a number from going over a certain amount and make it loop around. So we count up 359, 360, or sorry, 359, zero, one, two, like that. And then we rotate that original image by that amount. And that's going to make everything look much better. See, now I have nice rotating images. But you might see, see that one, see them rotating a little oddly. Now we have another thing to keep uh, track of, and that is our rectangles aren't good anymore. And what do I mean by the rectangles not being good? Well, I've made a quick little example here of a program that will um, rotate a 
ship on the screen. So I took the ship image and I said, rotate it, just keep rotating it around like we're doing with the meteors. Now you can see how it's not rotating very cleanly. It's bouncing around. Why is it bouncing around like that? Well, if I draw a rectangle there, you can see this a little better. So when we originally created the image, we created that rect around it. But now we're rotating that image and it doesn't always fit inside that rect anymore. So what happens is, is every time you rotate it, you need to figure out a new rectangle that fits around that image. And then you want to take that rectangle and make sure you keep it centered at the same spot always. So we want this rectangle to change size and shape based on whatever the image is. And we also want it to uh, stay centered so it looks like the ship is rotating around its center. Okay, now we can do that. Uh, I'll show you what that looks like. It looks like this. See, every time the ship rotates, we figure out a new rectangle that encloses it, which sometimes gets bigger and smaller depending on you know, how it fits around the image. But it always stays centered in the same place, so my ship looks like it's just turning in a circle. And that's what we want to do with our meteors as well. Okay, so if we come back over here to our rotate function here. This rotated image is going to be our, we're going to call this our the new image. So this is the new image that we're going to use. And we also need to figure out where where was our center. So our, our, oops, so our rectangle is centered right now at this old center, right? So now we can set our image to the new image and we can get our new uh, get our new rectangle, which is image.get rect. So now we have our new rectangle, and we'll take our new rectangle and we'll put its center at the same spot as the old center was. And that will do exactly what you saw that ship doing. Replace the image with the new one, figure out its new rectangle, and keep it centered at the same spot the old one was. Now our rotating meteors are going to look quite nice tumbling through space. Some fast, some slow, and everything else will work just fine. We can still shoot them, um, and we can still be hit by them. Okay, so one other thing I wanted to do uh, for this video is make those meteors a little more interesting by using um, a bunch of different images for them. If we Go back over to our files here. Um, in the art pack, there were all sorts of different size meteors, big, small, even tiny ones. Um, and what I'd like is for my sprites to just be randomly picking one of these so that we have different looking meteors instead of all being exactly the same. So I'm just going to move this over here so I can see the list. So what we want to do is instead of loading this one image, we're going to make a list called Meteor Images, and that's going to be empty right now, but that's going to hold all of our images so that we can randomly choose one out of that list. So what we need to do is make a list here of, um, of the files that we're going to use. Okay, so I'm going to put, oops, I'm going to put the Meteor, um, Meteor Brown, Uh, big1.png. Okay, I'm just going to copy this a few times so that I don't have to retype it. Uh, we'll wrap this around. And we have one more. Um, and then we can just fix them. So there we go. So I want big1, big2. Medium one and medium two. I have small one and small two, and I have tiny number one. Okay, so now I have this is the list of all those file names that we want to load. So we can now just do a little loop through the meteor list, this meteor list of files and each time we want to just do the image load on it. So we're going to say meteor images.append 
and what we want to append is pygame.image.load path.join the image dir uh, with the whatever file name we're doing. Um, we don't want to forget to do dot convert. And then at the end of this loop, we'll have a meteor list, uh, a list of meteors and meteor images that's full of all the right images. And we can go up to our mob here, and instead of loading this one image, we're going to say random.choice of meteor images. And then we should be randomly picking. Oops, looks like I made a typo in my list. Oh, yep. Missing a comma right there. That'll be a problem. So now, there we go. So now sometimes I've got big ones, sometimes I've got small ones. The big ones are not appearing far enough off the screen. So we probably want to move them up a little bit. This Y that we picked, this random Y, is probably too small. So maybe we'll go from there to there so that they appear off the screen. Now we get the nice big ones, the tiny ones. And that will do it for this video. See you next time.